What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today is the final episode of our 2D Endless Runner tutorial series and in this episode we're just going to make our game look pretty by adding some post processing to our game. Now at the start of this series I said it doesn't matter if you use uh, URP or built-in and that's still the case however if you didn't select URP then the post processing is put in differently and you should probably check out a video probably like Bracky's post processing video I will leave a link down below for the built-in uh, for a built-in post processor basically and for this video we're gonna be using URP's built-in post processor okay so the first thing we're gonna start by doing is going into our um, main camera here and going to rendering now under rendering you're gonna see post processing but it's gonna be disabled most likely unless you've changed that saying so what you need to do is just tick that on I'm also going to turn on anti-aliasing to, to FXAA. Now, this is all going to depend on what sort of game you're trying to make. If you're trying to make a mobile game, you're probably going to want to have a lot less settings, especially you might not even want post-processing for a mobile game. But if you're making one for a PC, then all these settings will be fine. So once you have enabled post-processing, the next thing you want to check is going into your asset settings and going to your renderer in here and check under post processing and make sure it's enabled if it's not enabled then you're probably going to want to enable it finally to add it to our scene what we need is a volume now we're going to use a global volume and add it to our game we're then going to need to create a new uh, volume profile so we'll just select like new and create a new profile now if we go to game you'll see it all looks the same so let's start adding some actual overrides now the first override i'm going to be looking for in post processing is bloom now bloom allows you to make things look like they're a bit more glowy a bit more um you know make it look like there's a bit of a glow so you can see here let's just turn off the canvas just for a second so we can actually see the game and go back to our global phone. Now here you can see I can mess around with the intensity to make the glow more uh, apparent or more, you know, show off a bit more. You can apply some different tints to your uh, glows. You can see here you can have some really cool effects going on with little red glow coming out of the ground. However, we're just going to leave a fresh hold. You can leave it about the same default here and about one for that one. And this will give you a nice light bloom effect to your game. The next one I'm going to add is lens distortion. Now, lens distortion allows us to essentially warp how our game looks slightly. And you can see here, this is essentially what it does. It basically applies a realistic lens effect to it. So you kind of get like a fisheye lens here. Now, we just want a little bit so i'm going to put 0.25 to add a little bit of curve to our warping in fact i'm going to add 0 0.25 and not minus because that gives you kind of a little curve here and now if we just hit play you can kind of see how this already changing the game so now the game kind of looks like it's being run on a uh you know one of those old tvs with a little curve on it oh and i realized we turned off the camera so we can't actually click play right now so let's hit play and actually get started so this comes in we can hit play and now you can see everything's updating and you can see the items are coming round and it kind of looks a bit cooler it's not like they're not actually coming out of um, a straight line it's like they're curving round some sort of spherical item now there are a lot of um, post processing effects you can have and i suggest you just going through this and actually trying it out now another one i'm gonna add is a little vignette um here you can see one is probably way too much about zero point two maybe even three you can see this is now a pretty nice effect you probably don't want those thick so about 0 0.3 is adding a nice little darkness you can also add in some smoothness here so if we put that up to five you can kind of see how it smooths it out um i'll probably put this that back to three and maybe a 0 0.5 on the smoothness maybe a 0 0.2 um, and I think that mm, 0 0.3 there you go that's giving you a bit of a darker effect on the edges and a bit more light in the middle now again I'm probably overdoing it with these post processing effect a little goes a long way but I just want to show you all the different ones which I would normally use in the game um, motion blur no one likes motion blur don't add it um, but you've got like film grain and you can add like different levels of film grain here we turn on intensity and set to like one you can see you've got this like distorted like TV effect um, you can add in different ones. You've got like different thicknesses. You can go for a large thickness. 
Personally, I like the Fin 1 and also probably to put the intensity on something like 0 0.5, maybe even 0 0.2, just to add that light grain effect over the top. And that is it really for our post-processing, prettifying our game. There's a lot more things you can do, especially when it comes to the color of your game, the different color objects. You can do a lot of different contrasts. You can see here the colors don't really match the game. So you're probably gonna wanna mess around with those as well. But you can see just adding in a few different post-processing effects can make the game look way better than it was. And a nice way to visualize this is actually by turning off our post-processing. So if we just play, you can see it like that. And if we turn off our volume, you can actually see what it looks like without any of the effects going on. So as we're going through, if I now click here, you can see it adds in the sort of bendy curviness to the screen, the distortion. And all of that adds different levels. You can turn off individual ones to mess around with it. But you can see here, there's a lot that goes into um, post-processing to make it look really good. Now, I, I've definitely overdone it here. I think you can get away with your game looking pretty good with just bloom and a little bit of lens distortion, maybe even a little vignette and maybe even no film grain. But what I really want to do is just show you all the different effects you could, which I would use. These are probably the ones I would use the most. And then I'd probably add in a few other ones depending on what it is we want. But that's going to be it for this whole series, guys. So if you've enjoyed this series, then please don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video. Smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Now, if you want the source code for this project, you can easily get it at my Patreon. The link is down below. You can also get every single lesson up to this last lesson individually. If you want to start from, let's say, lesson two or lesson three, you can grab those lessons specifically from the Patreon. You'd also be supporting the channel as well, helping me make more videos for you guys to enjoy. But that's going to be it, guys. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.